while I'll always be the first in line to drive a track-focused sports car, sometimes you just want something smooth and sophisticated. Today I'm getting all wafty and going for a serene Jag XJ6 and a stylish Maserati Quattroporte. Now, as these are cars that you could easily be driven in rather than drive, I'm going for the back seat. Only joking, Mrs. Fifth Gear. Let's start with the Brit. The first XJ6 appeared in 1968, and many motoring journalists said that it was the best car in the world ever. XJ stood for Experimental Jaguar, although why a production car would be experimental, well, who knows? Thankfully, the six makes more sense because it represents the number of cylinders. This Series 3 version arrived in 1979. There were two engine choices, a 3.4 or the 4.2 that's fitted to this top-of-the-range Sovereign model. Its 205 horses can propel the Jag to 62 in 9.8 seconds. So I'm going to put my foot down. Oh, little kick down of the auto box there. And a nice, steady progression. Nothing too exciting, but definitely a pleasant move forwards. Graceful. So it's no rocket ship, but thanks to fully independent suspension and disc brakes all round, it can be driven with enthusiasm. And then there is the grip, which is pretty impressive, I have to say. It kind of squats down and does grip well. But is the magic carpet ride quality that remains its biggest asset? I can sense that there are lots of things going on underneath, but here in the cabin and at the wheel, I feel very calm, very comfortable. The bumps are nicely cushioned out for me. So it's, it's standing the test of time quite well. And then there are the surroundings, such charm, such character. Just look at this, the Connolly leather, the walnut dash, the deep pearl carpets. It's like the Savoy on wheels. Back in 1987, this car cost precisely £20,795. Today's classifieds are full of similar vintage XJ6s that can be had for two or three grand. However, a decent, well-maintained model will cost closer to £12,000. But make sure it is decent, because you could spend many times the purchase price fixing it. Here are some things to check. The engines are robust, but good oil pressure is essential for a long life. It should read 40 psi on startup and at least 20 psi when warm. If not, a reconditioned engine could set you back six grand. And to further complicate things, these gauges can be inaccurate, so get a mechanic to check them. Make sure the aircon is working. If not, another six grand chill could be heading down your back. And although build quality improved markedly in later years, XJ6s were still prone to rot so check the usual places like the sills and front and rear screen surrounds. Meanwhile, over in Italy... Quattro Porte. The name sounds so elegant, and it is just as well we don't say it in English, or else we'll be saying four doors. The Quattro Porte first arrived in 1963, and over the next four decades, four models were made. But it didn't really set the world on fire. At one point, only five cars were sold over two years. However, in 2004, this came along, the Mark V. Maserati ploughed £140 million into the development and brought in Italian style house Pininfarina to clothe it in a sleek suit. And I think they did a very good job. And being a Maserati, it moves. Although more powerful engines followed, the first cars had a 4.2 litre V8, as this one does. And I have to say, it's more than enough. 400 horsepower gets it to 62 in 5.2 seconds. Ooh. And on to 170, when the law allows. 
It just goes to show how the game had moved on, because this has almost double the power of the XJ6. Let's give it a little tickle. I really think that the engine is the superstar here. It is noisy, fantastically noisy. It is quite revvy and it just has loads of punch. It's quite addictive. So it looks good, it sounds good and it goes well. And there's loads of space in the front and back, which is hardly surprising as the car is over five metres long. Twenty years ago, this car cost £77,000, but now a nice 50,000 miler like this one could be yours for under 12000 That's very tempting, but don't forget, this is Automobile Exotica, so do keep your wits about you when buying. For example, the clutch only lasts 20 to 30,000 miles and it's £3,000 to replace. The car weighs nearly two tonnes and eats brakes. A set of front discs and pads will set you back £1,500. And if you hear tapping from the engine, it could mean camshaft trouble and cost you £5,000. But now it's decision time. Which car would I want to take home? So, British beef or Italian smoothie? Serenity or adventure? It really depends what mood you're in. I'm finding it so hard to choose but I might have to just go slightly adventurous. Oh, tough. <laughs>